I'm Callie with Power Studies Inc. and this is the current Q&A. This month on the current Q&A, we're asking the question, when do I need an energized electrical work permit? And to answer that question for us is Robert Feuer, professional engineer and president of Power Studies Inc. Bob, can you answer that for us? When do I need an EEWP? Certainly, I can answer that. Well, uh, it's it's spelled out pretty pretty plainly here in NFPA 70, the new version, and in Section 130.2b, um, they they have two requirements, two certain uh, tasks that you might be doing uh, that might require this energized electrical work permit. And number one is uh, when the work is to be performed within the restricted approach boundary. That is one of the shock boundaries, one of the two shock boundaries. And if you're going to go past that point, that boundary, then you need that energized electrical work permit. The second is when an employee is going to be interacting with the electrical equipment in such a way that they could either create an arc flash um, accident themselves or that there is an arc flash hazard to begin with. And uh, Table 130.7C15AA uh, lists various tasks. This is a brand new table that's in the NFPA 70 this year. And it lists all these different tasks for what electricians might be doing. And it will tell you based on that task, whether or not they, the authors of this, um, of this document, whether they feel there's an arc flash hazard or not. And if there is an arc flash hazard, then you have to wear the right PPE. Well, Bob, I got another question for you. Yes. I know sometimes you're exempt from needing an EEWP. When are those circumstances? When would you not need an EEWP? It, I get that question quite a bit and it's, it's really pretty basic. If you're doing repair work, um, or you're, you're actually going to repair a piece of electrical equipment, you're going to install a circuit breaker, you're going to tighten a connection, that's when you need this electrical energized work permit. However, if you're doing um, phasing, measurement of current, measurement of voltage, you're doing troubleshooting, these tasks all require that the power remain on. And so it's very important uh, that the power stays on so you can do these tasks. And those are the tasks that you don't need an energized electrical work permit for. Well, thank you very much for explaining that for us, Bob. So there you have it. That's when you need an energized electrical work permit, and that's when you don't. So that was it for this month's current Q&A. Stay tuned for next month's current Q&A. No, no, wait, wait, there's two more things, two more things. It's access to and egress from an area with energized electrical equipment if no electrical work is performed and restricted approach boundary is not crossed. Number four is general housekeeping and miscellaneous non-electrical tasks if the restricted approach boundary is not crossed. So there you have it, four different um, exemptions when you don't need an electrical work permit.